Welcome back to Godot 101. This is part 14. And in this lesson, we're going to introduce the next of the physics bodies in the Godot engine, the rigid body 2D. So I've started out here by making a simple scene using a rigid body 2D, which I've named Crate. And attached to it, I have a sprite and a collision shape, which I'm using this little Crate image so it will look like something interesting. And I'm just using a simple rectangle collision shape. So to start with, let's look at all the properties that we have with the rigid body 2D. Now the first one here is mode, and by default that's going to be set to rigid. There are some other options here. If you choose static, you can have your rigid body 2D behave like it was a static body, meaning it won't move anymore. Um, you can have it behave like it was a kinematic body, where you will have to use code to move it, like when you use a kinematic body 2D. You can also set it to character mode, which means it's going to behave like a rigid body, but it won't be able to rotate. So you can move it around like it's a character running around on the screen, but it won't spin when it hits something um, that would make it spin. Uh, so we're going to leave that rigid for right now. And then there's a whole bunch of physical properties like mass and friction and gravity. And we'll talk about what those things are uh, a little bit later in the video. But you'll see if we just run this scene, if we've created the crate, it's going to just fall like it's responding to gravity. And that comes from this gravity scale setting right here. If I increase that to a higher number, which you will see, it's going to fall a little bit faster. So now that's not very exciting. So I've created a quick little main scene here where I've just taken three static bodies and just lay them out here to be some walls uh, that our object can collide with. And then I'm going to put an instance of that crate here in, don't want to resize it, uh, put an instance of that crate here into our scene. So now you can see when we play it, the crate will fall and it will hit that static body and slide along it in a very realistic fashion. Now all of these physical properties will apply to how the object behaves when it interacts with the environment. If we gave the shape a little bit less friction, right? if I set the friction to 0 0.5, then you're going to see when it hits the wall, it's going to slide along it some right? And before it comes to rest, like the wall is a little more slippery. You can go as low as 0 and say you want no friction between the two objects, in which case it's going to slide very freely. But it doesn't bounce very much. And the bounce is a separate value, right? We can set that to something and see that the object will bounce now when it hits and slide like it has no friction. So you can do all of this. Notice we haven't written any code. So the rigid body 2D is using Godot's built-in physics engine to do all the calculations for how this object should behave based on its collision shape and the properties that you've set. And I'm going to set these back for a moment. And so you can get some pretty complex behavior right out of the box just by using these properties. So I'm going to duplicate this crate a couple of times and make a little stack here so that we can see, you know, when we run the scene, these crates will just fall and stay on top of each other. And so if we have if we were to have a another crate over here, and I'm going to give this crate some starting velocity. See here we can set a linear or an angular velocity. So we can give it a uh, a starting speed and we can give it a rotational speed. Well, I'm going to set the starting velocity to minus 500 in the x. So it's going to be traveling to the left. So when I hit play, this crate is going to be flying to the left. right? And you can see it bounces off those crates and falls to the ground. Now if this crate were to have a larger mass, like let's multiply that mass by 10, and I were to do the same thing, then now because that crate weighs so much more than the other ones, it pushes them all aside. And so you could 
play around with that and get all sorts of uh, physics style behavior. You know, you can imagine making an Angry Birds type game, that kind of thing, very easily by combining these rigid bodies in, uh, in the way you want. Now, when you do want to add additional behavior or control to a rigid body, there are a whole bunch of methods that you get uh, to be able to do that with. But something you have to keep in mind with the rigid body is because it is part of the full physics simulation, you can't just change the node's location or change its velocity directly. You have to m apply forces to it. Right? Gravity is a force that's acting on it right now, and you can add additional forces using the add force method. Uh, there is also an apply impulse method, which is kind of like giving it a kick. Right, Adding a force is going to be a steady force applying to the object. An impulse is going to be an instantaneous force, uh, like you hit it with a stick or you pushed it. And that's how you're going to make the object move. So let's look at an example of that. So we've got our crate, and we're going to add a script. Okay, and in this script, in the in the ready function, I'm just going to add a force. And when you add a force, you have two parameters: the offset, which is how far from the center you want the force applied. So if you want it directly in the center, you can leave that zero. And then the second one is what the what force you want. All right, let's put my let's put zero minus five hundred. Oops. So what we're going to do is have this, when this body starts, it's going to have a, an upward force being applied to it. And of course, what that's going to do is that's going to just barely counteract gravity. So gravity is pulling down, but I have a force pushing up, which is canceling it out. So because we used add force, this force is applied to the object permanently. It will continually apply to the object until we choose to remove it by adding an equal and opposite force to cancel it out. So you can apply lots of different forces and they will be, the vectors will all be added together and you will have a resulting force that will be applied to the body. Now the other option that you have instead of that is an impulse, which is an instantaneous kick. So let's, uh, let's set input to true and then we're going to say if event dot is action pressed and we're going to use UI select because that's the space bar. Now if the space bar happens we're going to apply an impulse. Now when you apply an impulse you have the same options. You have an offset which let's do it a little bit offset from the center and then you have a magnitude how much force do you want to apply. So we'll do the same thing again. We'll do that minus 500 upwards force. So now whenever I press the space bar, this is going to be applied. An instantaneous force is going to be applied to the object. So we let it fall to the ground. And then when we hit space bar, there you see, and it rotated because the force was applied offset from the center. So it's like I kicked it right here. And every time I hit the space bar, that impulse is going to be applied. So as another simple example, let's change this event to mouse click. And what we're going to do is whenever the mouse is clicked, we want to get what direction the mouse pointer is in. So the direction is going to be, we need to get the global mouse position, subtract the body's position, and normalize it then now we have a direction vector pointing in the direction of where the mouse was clicked. And we're going to apply an impulse like we did before. And we're going to use that direction vector times, say, 800. So now go back over to our crate and let's set the gravity to zero. So we won't be falling. The crate will just hang there in space. We're in zero gravity. But if I click the mouse, the crate is going to move in that direction. And you can see because there's no gravity, it's going to just keep going in whatever direction after it hits something. 
And so something else that we can do is we can set this damping. Damping is lets you simulate basically a more viscous material, like maybe the air, you're, maybe you're underwater instead of in the air. And so this is how quickly the linear or angular velocity will be damped, how quickly it will bleed away. So if we do that now, you'll see when I hit the click, it does slowly come to a stop because it's more like it's under, there's some sort of friction as it moves. So that's a simple first look at the rigid body 2D and how to work with it. In the next video, we'll talk a little bit more about how to work with forces and control the rigid body to get it to do what you want it to do in your scene. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.